from New Hanover County Schools Television. Three-time Blue Ribbon winner for the North Carolina Schools Public Relations Association for Outstanding Electronic Media. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news for the week of April 11th through April the 17th, 2016. I'm Louis Behar. And I'm Maggie Cottle. Topping our newscast this week, Board of Education holds April meeting, Beekeeper visits the Students College Road Early Developmental Center, and it's time to register for the teacher trot. Topping our newscast this week, Board Notes. The Board of Education held their regular monthly meeting on Tuesday, April 5th in the Board of Education of Center. Well, all we have all the details on the notes. This month's meeting is Weissen reporter Bobby Blue. The April Board of Education meeting included a large number of recognitions and new business focused primarily on projects from the Operations Department. Let's get right to the board notes. Under recognition of achievement, the board recognized the state wrestling champion from Laney High School. The Finance Division was recognized for earning two certificates of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. Additionally, the Director of Finance earned the Award of Financial Reporting Achievement for preparing an award-winning, comprehensive annual financial report. Myrtle Grove Middle School's team was recognized for winning the 7th Annual Middle School Black History Quiz Bowl for the third year in a row. The 2015-2016 state-level PTA Reflections Art Contest winners were recognized and Board of Education member Edward Higgins was recognized for his appointment to the North Carolina Board Association's Legislative Committee. Under information, Board member Edward B. Higgins gave a report on the Head Start program, and Superintendent Dr. Tim Markley made a presentation on the 2016-17 proposed county budget request. Under new business, the Blackboard Student Notification System contract renewal was approved, exchange of utility easements for Bellamy Elementary School was approved, and the Procurement Plan Child Nutrition Program was approved. Also under new business, the Bellamy Elementary School painting contract, bids for New Hanover High School's George West building renovations, bids for Sidbury Road complex improvements, bids for E.A. Laney High School phase two abatement replacement, and the dedication of right-of-way to the North Carolina Department of Transportation at the Sidbury Road Complex were all approved. Additional items discussed and approved for the Operations Department were an amendment to Access, Utility, and Drainage Easement Agreement for Porter's Neck Elementary School and the Utility Easement Agreement for Porter's Neck Elementary School. Finally, the Board approved additions to the Curriculum Course Guide, the Sole Source Resolution with Castle Learning, and reservations to the 2015-2016 calendar. The next regular Board of Education meeting will be Tuesday, May 3rd at 5.30 p.m. at the Board of Education Center, 1805 South 13th Street. As always, if you cannot attend the meeting in person, you can watch rebroadcast Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., Friday mornings at 8 a.m., and Sundays at 1 p.m. Board meetings can also be watched online at the school system's website. <clears throat> That's your board notes for April. Back to you. Prior to the April school board meeting, the New Hanover County Board of Education announced the first cohort of the Board of Education and Student Scholarships for Future Teachers at a special signing ceremony. Each student received a scholarship for a total amount of $28,000 to support them as they pursue a career in education. The four students winning are the scholarships are Chloe Schaefer from Laney High School. Chloe is a member of Laney's Teacher Cadet Program and is the president of the Future Teachers of America. Samuel Unruh from Hoggard High School. Samuel is a member of the Hoggard Marching Band, Beta Club, and National Honor Society. Casey White from Isaac Bear Early College High School. Casey is a mentor for Isaac Bear's Best Program and a member of the National Honor Society and the senior editor of the school yearbook. And Lindsay Wilcox from Hoggard High School. Lindsay volunteers and tutors at several New Hanover County schools. Forest Hills Global Elementary School had seven of its students participate in the Odyssey of the Mind, State Finals, and Wingate, placing fourth overall in their division. The Forest Hills team, under the guidance of coach and gifted education specialist, Stefani Tu, had taken first place in their division in the Coastal Region Tournament back in March to advance to the state competition. Odyssey of the Mind is the international educational program that provides creative problem-solving opportunities for students from kindergarten through college. 
Thanks for buzzing at the College Road Early Deve De Development Center as the students learned all about bees. The school was fortunate enough to have a real-life beekeeper on campus, and boy did he know a lot of stuff. He even brought props with him so the children could see everything it takes to make honey. Students learned that bees have a special tongue that sucks up the nectar and a special stomach for storing it until they get back to the hive, where it is turned into honey to use as food. The beekeeper explained to the students that many plants depend on bees to spread pollen, helping them to reproduce. Flowers that attract bees are usually yellow, blue, or purple. Many bees specialize in one plant species. In areas where different flowering plants bloom at the same time, this keeps a different bee species from fighting over the same flower. The students learn that honeybees and bumblebees live in colonies or hives. All the bees in the colony work together for, each, for the good of the hive. Each has a job to do. The queen lays the eggs and the workers build the honeycomb, care for the larvae, and collect the food. The coolest things for the students was living the living section of one of the beekeeper's hives that he brought for them to see. Students got to see up close the hive, the bees working the hive, and even little baby bees just being born. It was an extremely cool event for everyone. Finally, the fourth annual Teacher Trot 5K Race and Fun Run presented by Hendrick Toyota of Wilmington is Saturday, May 7th. The event will begin at 8 a.m. and will be held at Ashley High School. Proceeds raised from the event will help support NHCS staff wellness and student physical education programs. Registration costs, for, I'm sorry, registrations costs are $25 for adults and $15 for students. Race day registrations will be $30 and will begin at 7 a.m. At, at, at the Ashley Track. To register online, visit the school system's website at www.nhcs.net and click on the teacher trot icon. Many schools will form team, teams and compete for awards that include most school spirit and most participation. In addition, awards will be given to the top three finishers in the following categories age groups, best overall, and teams. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on New Hanover County Schools' first annual Technology Engineering Day, Queen Azalea visits Ogden Elementary School, and Myrtle Grove Middle School hosts an amazing career day for students. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhts.net. Please friend NHCS TV on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Don't go away, we'll be right back. History's Timeline, a world of history in 60 seconds, brought to you by New Hanover County Schools. May 7, 1960, Leonid Brezhnev becomes president of the USSR. October 22, 1962, President John Kennedy announces that Russia has installed missiles in Cuba. After a U.S. blockade, the missiles are dismantled. December 2, 1967, the first human heart transplant is carried out successfully in Cape Town, South Africa. April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King, U.S. civil rights leader, is assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. This has been History's Timeline, an educational snapshot of the fascinating people, places, and events that have shaped our past. Welcome back to your school news. The first annual New Hanover County High School Technology Engineering Day contest and workshop was held recently at Hoggard High. A special guest speaker, amazing workshops, and an incredible roller coaster contest made the event fun and memorable for everyone. YSN reporter Stephen Thornton has all the details. It wasn't a joke on April 1st when the 2016 first annual County Technology Engineering Day contest and workshops were held at Hoggard High School. This first time event featured a host of new experiences for all the students involved. The event kicked off with a presentation from Dr. Amy Reamer. Dr. Reamer is program director and academic advisor for the NC State Engineering 2 plus 2 transfer program at UNCW. She stared she shared with the students a few words about her profession, the workshop, and the overall importance of engineering in today's world. Um, I hope that they heard that engineering is a very diverse field and that engineers ultimately solve tough problems. And so I was giving them a few examples of how they might solve problems kind of um, commiserate with what they were doing today to solve these um, roller coasters, to, to build their roller coaster. Two workshops featuring four events were a major part of the engineering day activities. Each workshop focused on a different form of engineering. 
One of those, structural engineering, put the, put the students under a little pressure. Given only two sheets of paper and five inches of tape, the students were challenged to create a way to support 30 textbooks. In another workshop on industrial engineering, student teams had to build the tallest towers using only pasta and marshmallows. Yeah, um, one was when we had to use toothpicks to like build stuff and then take them apart to build something connected to it and build other things. So it's like using two things for one or one thing for two, you know what I mean? The centerpiece for this year's event was roller coaster design. The event called on teams to use concepts commonly found in technology, engineering, and design and drafting classes, which most students were taking. The design of the roller coasters was left up to the students, although each design had to meet a number of constraints assigned at the beginning of the project. It's actually really fun because normally in technology, it's kind of you just present to your class and that's it. No one out of class gets to see what you actually do, but when you do it, as a big group and stuff, you actually get to show other people like, hey, this is what I built. Because normally you can't take these big projects and just like pull them around class, like you can't really do that. With this competition, students got to use their creative ingenuity and work, with, and work as a team to make the best roller coaster. It taught budgeting, task distribution, architectural design, teamwork, and trust in their fellow classmates. Though it was a contest, it was more about working together to achieve their goal. We look forward to next year's event. Reporting for Your School News, this is Stephen Thornton. Two New York County schools educators were recently named among six finalists for the North Carolina Virtual Public Schools e-learning advisor slash e-learning coordinator of the year award. The two NHCS finalists are Christy Prokop from the Career Readiness Academy at Mosley and Isaac Bear, and the other finalist is Lori Herring from Hoggard High School. Kids seem to really enjoy um, online learning. I think because it gives them a break from being in a classroom with, um, you know, the noise and the chatter and um, it kind of lets them have a little downtime. Online learning has grown leaps and bounds and um, really, have, really has improved. Um, I know like five years ago you'll he hear people talk about how um, terrible online learning was because they were still working out the kinks, but now it's like smooth sailing. The North Carolina Virtual Public Schools will announce this year's e-learning advisor slash e-learning coordinator of the year in May. The North Carolina Virtual Public Schools e-learning advisor and e-learning coordinator award is designed to recognize an ELA or ELC whose innovative practices serve as a model for other schools or districts. Myrtle Grove Middle School recently held a career and college fair which each grade level at the school was able to attend. Local businesses were invited to speak in the middle school students about what, the, what their company does, why their field is an interesting career path, and how a college education can prepare someone for that type of career. The fair was designed to help students think about their future and expose them to some of the possibilities available to them. We need to expose our middle school kids to the future, what they really want to make of their lives. And we do a lot in the classroom, but we felt it would be really, really more enriching if they could actually talk to people in the community professionals in different areas, medicine, um, real estate, business. And we have a broad, a broad range here. It's just been great for the kids to think about what they want to do in their future. Many businesses attended the fair covering a wide variety of fields. In addition to Cape Fear Community College and UNC Wilmington were on hand to give students information on attending college. Even though these middle schoolers have several years before they begin a career path, the fair was important in helping them create a vision of what they would like to do. Having the chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with people from different career areas was a valuable experience. The excitement and pageantry of the Azalea Festival is an event that everyone from the oldest to the youngest got to enjoy this year. The students at Ogden Elementary especially we tr were treated to a once-in-a-lifetime Azalea Festival as their school was included as part of the Azalea Queens tour around Wilmington. We get the details from Kathy Kale. Azalea Bells, beauty queens, cadets, and celebrities swept onto the Ogden Elementary campus with sirens sounding just as the rain faded and the sun came out. This made it possible for all the children at the school to get a chance to see Queen Azalea Anna Coyman. Miss Coyman spoke with the children and teachers as she made her way into the school, stopping along the way to take photos with the adorable students. The president of the 2016 festival, Robbie Collins, thanked the school for opening its doors and being a part of the Queen City Tour. As a token of the festival's appreciation, Mr. Collins presented the school with a framed print of this year's Azalea Festival poster. Then a Queen Azalea took the stage with microphone in hand, 
she jumped right into the crowd of students, talking with them about their future plans and sharing with them the message to never give up on their dreams. She closed her presentation with an interactive call and response with the students. Thunderous applause followed the Queen's remarks. As a special gift to Queen Azalea, the school gave her a giant basket of North Carolina goodies from across the state. The visit wrapped up with student Macy Thompson reading a poem about the beauty of an azalea and Ogden Stingrays singing the power of a dream. As the Queen and her court made their way out, many students got another chance to high-five members of the Queen's court and some even taking selfies as mementos of the wonderful day. Reporting for your school news, this is Kathy Kale. Finally, we need to make a correction regarding a story we reported on last week. We incorrectly reported the deadline for applications to Ashley High School Marine Science Academy. The correct deadline is April 15th, this week. Applications are available on the Eugene Ashley High School homepage under the Marine Science Academy tab. The Marine Science Academy provides a unique college level experience by offering the equivalent of two introductory marine science courses usually taken during the first college year. Students interested in marine biology, oceanography, or the academy are highly encouraged to apply. Once again, the deadline for applications to this program is April 15th. Now, nah, don't go away. Coming up, Laney High School makes a donation to Zimmer Cancer Center. Plus, we have a look at education across the nation and education index and what's on tap for lunch with the Lunch Bill Affair. Euro School News will continue after the break. Sixty-inch screen, high definition. Football season is coming up. You can watch it right here. What do you think? I'll huh? take it. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You're right. I don't need it. When you see and hear the following statement just before your favorite program, the following program is made possible with the support of... Pay attention because the messages and announcements that follow give credit to our corporate and community partners who are making a great business investment by showing their backing for the students and schools here in New Hanover County. Please show your support to our underwriters whose names and logos are associated with the shows produced by New Hanover County Schools Television by saying thank you when you enter their places of business or visit their offices. For those businesses and organizations that would like to join our roster of underwriters, and benefit from the corporate sponsorship of one of our programs, then give us a call at 254-4106. And thanks again to all our sponsors and those who support them. Welcome back to Your School News. It's time for our Education Index, a look around the nation and the world at some of the top stories in education. Top of the index, a man in a recent rise in sexual misconduct cases involving teachers. The Clark County School District in Nevada is looking to implement a policy that restricts digital communications between students and teachers. An investigation by the Las Vegas Sun of, teachers, of teacher sex abuse cases in the Clark County District from 2005 to 2015 found that half included private electronic communication between the teacher and the victim, and around 80% of cases within the last five years. In addition of the five teachers arrested on sexual misconduct charges since the investigation, four were found to have privately communicated with students without the knowledge of their parents. When is a college course not really a college course? When it's classified as developmental or remedial. These courses cover materials considered high school level, typically in math or English composition. College students who do not meet academic standards or can't pass a placement test must take these courses to graduate. They typically pay tuition as for any other course, but often, don't, but often these courses don't count for credit. A new study has found that overall, across all income groups at all types of colleges, students are borrowing an extra $380 million a year just to take high school level courses in the first year of college. Finally, the, why are there so few podcasts for kids? That's a question being asked by many in the education world. 
They believe that podcasts could offer a solution to kids overdosing on dreaded screen time, a way to ed entertain and educate kids without a fear of burning their retinas or letting their imaginations go to ruin. Studies have shown that children between the ages of 7 and 13 respond to more creatively to radio stories than to stories shown on television. These studies show that audio stories prompted kids to draw more novel pictures, think up more unique questions, and solve problems in a more imaginative way than TV tells. Educators have stated that when words are spoken aloud, kids can understand and engage these ideas that are two to three grades level higher than their reading level would normally allow. That's this week's Education Index, a quick look at some of the interesting education stories from around the nation and world. Now don't go away, we'll be right back with the Lunch Bell Fair. This is Your School News on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Also check NHCS TV on Facebook and Twitter. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Listen, I know you're upset, but it was just one date. And dating's like the stock market. Uh, there's uh, ups and, and downs and, and, and ups. And... So always buy low. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Welcome back to Your School News. It's time now for this week's Lunch Bill Affair. Our lunch menu specialist is standing by in the newsroom with the week's school lunch menu so parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with the New Hanover County school system can plan their lunchtime options. Thanks and welcome to this week's Lunch Bill Affair. We've got a great menu this week with lots of international cuisine. So let's take a look at this week's menu. On Tuesday, April 12th, sit down with your friends and enjoy orange chicken with rice and an egg roll, a meatball hoagie, or a bacon cheeseburger for lunch. Continue the explosion from flavor with the side items of sweet potato waffle fries, veggie sticks, and fresh fruit. On Wednesday, April 13th, warm yourself with corn dog nuggets, pork chop sandwich, and a cheesy breadstick. Along with those selections, you may add pasta salad, corn, garden salad, or diced peaches on the side. On Thursday, April 14th, get your grub on with stuffed crust pizza, chicken club sandwich, and popcorn chicken with a roll. Round the meal out with macaroni salad, tomato and cucumber salad, broccoli, or fresh fruit. On Friday, April 15th, Feast like royalty on a hot dog with chili, fish sticks with hush puppies, or chicken nuggets with a roll. Also, chow down on mac and cheese, baked beans, carrot sticks, garden salad, and spiced tomatoes. On Monday, April 18th, make haste to the lunch line for chicken filet sandwich, lasagna roll up with a breadstick, or a corn dog nugget. Please leave the lunch line. Please don't leave the lunch line until you have heaped on a side of garden peas, glazed sweet potatoes, garden salad, or mixed fruit. Now recapping this week's lunch menu. On Wednesday, we have a delicious pork chop sandwich, and on Thursday, we have the wonderful popcorn chicken. Throughout the week, your sides are veggie sticks, sliced apples, and garden salad. That's this week's Lunch Bill au fair. Remember to eat healthy at school and at home. I'm Chrissy Margus, back to you. Thanks. Don't forget, you can also catch the Lunch Bill Affair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and get lots of healthful nutrition information online at www.nhcs.net slash nutrition. 
Now don't go away. Coming up, Laney High School makes a donation to the Zimmer Cancer Center. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Your School News. The Zimmer Cancer Center, part of the New Hanover Regional Medical Center, is a treatment environment offering the rare combination of clinical and technological sophistication in a centralized, inconvenient, and welcoming setting. Last week, Laney High School's basketball teams and cheerleaders toured the facility as part of their annual donation in the fight against breast cancer. During their visit to the center, students learned how the monies they have collected would be used. The students also got to tour the complex. For going above and beyond in their efforts and raising money to fight breast cancer, select members of teams were invited to in attend the Pink Ribbon Luncheon with other community donors. It is with the support and help of many generous people throughout our region, like the Laney Squads, that New Hanover Regional Medical Center Foundation's Pink Ribbon Project has helped thousands of local women without insurance or other financial resources by providing mammography, screenings, diagnostics, comfort items, and spiritual support. To date, the Laney squads have raised over $3,000 to this cancer center. This year, they made an $800 donation. Well, that does it for this edition for, of Your School News, recapping some of the main stories. Board of Education held April meeting. Watch it online. Beekeeper visited the Students College Road Early Developmental Center, and it's time to register for the teacher trot. Remember, Your School News is on cable and online. Don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show, weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Maggie Cottle. And I'm Louis Behar. On behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching New Henry County Schools Television on a Learning Network. We close with music from Ogden Elementary's Azalea Queen Visit. Have a great day. Deep within each heart, there lies a magic spark. That lights the fire of our imaginations And since the dawn of man The strength of just I can Has brought together people of all nations There's nothing ordinary